that million dollars of premium that you sold on your own last year, you didn't meet no client face to face, not one. Not yeah. even on Zoom either. I've never even seen it. <laughs> never right. seen them. My name is Stevie Nee. I will be your guest today. I'm excited to be able to have one of the top producers, not just in the agency, but in the entire company, Harold Durana. Um, yeah. So, so here's the cool part. Um, you know, Harold, we just got back. Uh, some of the partners and, and I, we just got back from a meeting with, you know, Integrity and Sean and all that stuff. So, um, we can share numbers if we actually tell them how you did it. So just to start this off, I'm curious, um, how much premium did you write last year by yourself? Not team volume, by yourself. How much premium did you write? That was a million three. Million dollars and a million dollars and three thousand? Yeah, a oh. million three thousand. <laughs> wow. Okay. <laughs> um, how much did you spend on leads doing that? A lot. I know it's like a it probably at least a quarter. So like two hundred fifty thousand ish. <laughs> yeah, okay, and then um, you know how many hours do you work roughly uh, to do that? Ten ten hour minimums a day. It was pretty it's forty pretty fifty a week. Yeah. Easily. Okay, and no, it's not typical, and we can't guarantee that you'll do it too. But Harold did do it, so we're just going to start off the podcast with that. But dude, I, you know, I, the other thing that people don't know is like. We're somehow related, kind of, <laughs> through marriage, kind yeah. of, yeah. somehow. Um, but he's not on my team, but I love the guy to death because he's helped <laughs> us uh, so much. Um, but, Harold, how did you like? How did you find the industry? Because you didn't start at Family First Life. You started at another company. Mm -hmm. How did you even find the industry um, and then ended up here? <laughs> That's a great question. I started out, well, first I was doing cell phones. Like okay. Typical, you know, young wait, wait, kid. wait, singular or like? <laughs> yeah, when it was still singular. Yeah, I had, I had singular. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So I was doing that. You know, I was the annoying person at the mall trying to get you to come buy a phone. You're that guy. Yeah, definitely. It was the the you know it, it was fun though. When you're young, it's super fun. And you know, I was doing that for a while. I was making good money. You know, as a as a young you know 18, 19, 20 year old, you're like, oh, it's cool. 21, you're like, I'm making good money. And uh, somebody actually. That I worked with went into insurance, left, went to insurance. Okay. And, uh, you know, what she hit me up one time and was like, hey, you should try this insurance thing. I was like, what, what's insurance? Like, what do you mean? Life insurance? I was like, what is that? Right. She was like, I, I make more money now. And I was like, yeah, okay, sure. And it was funny because she actually literally showed me a check. And I was like, wait, what is this? Is this like a month, a week? And I was just like, oh, this is for a week. I was like, all right, I'm going to try it. <laughs> Let's do this. Uh, and the funny thing is I, I went to the whole, like, you know, like the interview process that they had and um, no clue what life insurance was. 21 years old. Of course, I don't. What is that? Right. Right. Went home to my mom. I was like, what's life insurance? <laughs> like, do you even have any? <laughs> yeah. What is that? You know, explain to me the whole thing. And, you know, just like any other mom, very supportive and was like, just give it a shot. You know, try it. Why not? You might like it. If you don't like it, it's okay. Try something else, right? You know, it's kind of like, that's what parents do. You got a different type of parent than me because my <laughs> yeah. parents were like, you're stupid. <laughs> <laughs> you're not a doctor. They're like, <laughs> right. Yeah. They're like, get a different license. Get a real job. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 21. So my mom was like, yeah, just give it a shot. We'll see what, you know, whatever happens, happens. So she already knew I didn't want to do the whole school route. Right. She was already there. She's like, yeah, you're not doing the school thing. Because I, I tried school. But so how long were you at that company? And how did they run their business model compared to, you know, what you've done here? Very, very, very different business model. So the thing is, is that it was a captive company. So just one carrier, you know, just a s small line of products. Okay. And they have, you know, their niche market leads. Okay. So the thing is, is when you're working that style, when it's like a niche market lead and uh, it's very specific, it's not an abundance of leads, you know, so... There's and, and that's one of the big reasons why I came here because of that, because you're stepping on each other and it's too much recycling of leads. You're passing them. You're basically passing them to the right. Every time you work leads, you just go pass to the next person, mm -hmm. pass to the next person. And, and that's it was constant. OK, 
But um, I started out actually in the field. I did go uh, do in-home visits, knocked on doors, did all of the above, drove all over the place, and um, I actually liked it. It was fun. But, but when your life changes, you know, like, of course, it was that was like 10 years of that. And then two years was Zoom. And when you get into Zoom, you're like, wow, I don't have to leave the house. I have, you know, I just have to put on a button up, <laughs> button up, you know, do my hair if I need to. And uh, it changed, right? And then I had kids. That completely changed the dynamic of the business for me, right? Being able to be home, being able to work from home and not have to disappear for like 12 hours, right? Because it, it'll be like if you're driving to a territory, you're like, takes an hour to get there. You're running a 10 hour, eight hour, nine hour, 10 hour day, and then another hour to get home. Right. Now you're looking at 12 hours I've been gone. Now I'm home and it's comfortable, right? I get comfort of my home. You know, the thing too, though, is though, when working from home is you could either take advantage of it or you could take advantage of it. All right. Right. And Explain that for them that they don't understand. Yeah. There's some people who take advantage of it in a bad way. It's like, oh, I'm at home. Oh, I can go to the grocery store middle of the day. Oh, I can go to the gym middle of the day. Oh, you want to go have lunch? Let's go have a two-hour lunch. Yeah, sure. You can do all those things, right? Because you're at, oh, I work from home. I'm my own boss. I'm going to do my own thing. But what are you doing? You're just taking away time from your business, and that ultimately is hurting you, right? So that's why sometimes, yeah, field was good for a lot of people because it took them out of the, um, out of the comfort of their home, took them out of the office, took them, it, you had to go somewhere. Whereas working from home, yeah, you got to have a certain level of discipline, right? And uh, even having your own home office makes it a lot easier. You have a place to go. You have a spot. That's important. Always have a good place. And then again, you could take advantage of it in a good way by you could start your day as early as you want. Like as long early as not, not that you want to, but you need to, right? So like if you needed to take an early morning appointment, you could because you're at home and you can go to your, your home office, you know, and take those early appointments. Or if you have a late appointment, right, instead of it being like, oh, man, I got, I'm in a territory, my last appointment's like, let's say, 9 o'clock at night, and you're kind of stuck there. Right. Versus at home, I'm like, all right, cool, I can take these. And when you're um, from working from home, I mean, you can take advantage of time zones, you can take advantage of even just time in general, because every, you weren't going to get no-shows, of course. You're going to get people not picking up, but – you can completely stuff your schedule, you right. know, every half hour easily. And that's the nice part is you can run different, you know, territories. Mm -hmm. You can run like 30, 40, 50 different states if you really wanted to yeah. compared to like being geographically, you have to run within an hour to two mile or hour to two hour radius, right? Mm -hmm. um, so how did you actually find Family First Life and how did you become a part of the agency here? Yeah, great question. So I got, I came here through way of Isaiah Tatami. Okay, and, great guy, uh, by the way. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely great guy. He was actually at the last company. Okay. For for just a blink, like a like a quick flash. <laughs> it was in and out. Um and uh you know, during that time, you know, most of the time I was never looking, right? Always getting recruited, sure, but never looking active like never looking myself, right? Just people just approaching. Then at a certain point, when you are having tough conversations with your agents about leads, not having enough leads, people not making bills, people getting stressed out, and it's just you're playing this shuffle, lead shuffle game too much, you start to think, and you go, and then your eyes start getting wider and wider, and you start looking around, and you're like, these guys don't have a lead problem. Yeah. Right? Because that's always the number one. In this industry, the biggest thing is leads. Lead flow is cash flow. Yep. So... It opened my eyes. Somebody had connected me with Isaiah. I was like, hey, give him a call. You know, he was here. He knows what it's like here. Give him a call. He went over there. He's doing really well. You should give him a call. Talked to him. Had a conversation. And his approach, way better than anybody else's, right? Everybody was, come over here. You are going to make more money. You will be, you'll be up. You'll get up there. You will make all this money and everything, right? And his approach was different. It was, how's your team? Let's talk team. How's your guys doing? What's your bottom agent doing? Can they survive on that comp structure? Right. Right? Based on how many policies they write. They write two, three, four, five policies. Can they survive on that comp structure? And the answer was no. Right. You know, unless they 
lived in the basement of their parents' home, then yeah, right. sure. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's that's the issue, right? The leads, not the wrong comp structure and all that stuff. I mean, it happens. So had this conversation and uh, took a leap of faith. Very, very, that was a very difficult decision. Coming from a place where 12 years of comfort, income-wise, very comfortable, okay? And having to explain this, you know, for anybody, explain to your spouse. Right. Hey, I know we're extremely comfortable. We're doing really well. I'm going to reset. I'm going to start all over and try this again. And do it all over and start from nothing. Like, you ready for this ride? <laughs> it's like. <laughs> but here's the thing, though. You didn't start from zero. And, and that's what I always tell people. It's, you know, because you, you don't lose the knowledge. Absolutely. You already know what didn't work, what you didn't like. So when you go to a new place, you can seek out the things that you wanted to mm-hmm. seek out, right? And and that's what I want, wanted to kind of talk about is, you know, you came in here and immediately went into the telesales, virtual sales, immediately right off mm-hmm. the bat, right? And at the, at the time, it was somewhat frowned upon because we were still going in the homes at the time. Yeah. And then you just flipped the switch and went berserk, yeah. right? Like, so that million dollars of premium that you sold on your own last year, you didn't meet no client face to face, not one. Not yeah. even on Zoom either. Never even seen it. <laughs> Never right. seen them. So, so like explain that because, you know, you, you talked about the advantages of being able to work, you know, different time zones mm-hmm. and all that. You know, one of the things I always tell people that, you know, are joining our industry, they they want to do virtual sales or telesales because they think it's easier. In my opinion, if you're not very disciplined, it's worse. Yeah. Because they can go wash the dishes because they can. They can go vacuum. They can do whatever they want during business hours, and that's so unproductive. And the other thing, too, is like literally, you know, I don't know how you do it, but it, it, we, we've we transitioned to a home office, too, recently, right? And when I sat down with Janelle, my wife, I said, all right, I can't just have like a little tiny table <laughs> in the loft. Yeah. Like give me an actual office like i need a full-blown desk with my computer set up and you know my 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 tools that i need to to work i see so many people literally roll out of bed and just sit on the couch and do telesales and i'm like yeah i don't know if that works that way Mm -hmm. you know and so what do you suggest because obviously you sold way more insurance than i did um when it comes to the guys that are doing virtual sales like what are some of those things that they need that they don't think they need Mm -hmm. but they need in order to succeed yeah absolutely well, okay, my setup at home, I do have a large desk. It is overkill, just so you know in advance, it is overkill. <laughs> I run a four-screen setup, and it's only for my own scatter for brain. Right. Because I'm a, I scatter sometimes, and I just don't like clicking around to all these different tabs. So I do have like a 31-inch screen in front of me. I got two 27s on the side, and then I have a, another 27 that's vertical. Okay. So, but the reason why I do this is because I am not the person who can just keep clicking around and stuff like that. I just hate that. It's too much of a distraction for me. So I want to have everything that I need, like screen, like tab wise, all in front of me. I use insurance toolkits. It's up no matter what, right? I have the client, the lead. It's up no matter what. I have my presentation bullet points. It's up no matter what. Okay. So I have everything that I know I'm going to use. So I'm not like, click, 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 where do, I go? Yeah, where right. do I go? So now all I do is just turn my head left and right, and it's there in front of me. Okay. I now, did you start I, off that way? I started off with, uh, at first, a laptop, one screen. Got it. And then I'm like, okay, let me do another screen. So laptop, two screens. Okay. okay. Then I had this, I was like, I need a better computer, right? And, it, and, you know, and I have this debate with people all the time about com- what computer to get, and, uh, I'm like, let's let's think about this. 99% of everything that I do is at home. So why am I using a laptop? Let me get a desktop mm-hmm. that actually has more power. Yep. You know, p- to be able to do the things I want it to do, more capacity. Uh, you know, I don't, I'm not dependent on a battery life. <laughs> you right. know, so I went and got a desktop. But at first, started with a laptop. Because that's the thing that a lot of people get worried about, right? Mm-hmm. They go, well, you know what? I don't have four screens. I don't have this you know, amazing Alienware computer. <laughs> hey, I'm out. I can't do it. Yeah. And it's like, dude, nobody started that way. Yeah. Right. Like I remember when I started, I had, you, you remember Surface Pros? Yeah. yeah. I had one of those. <laughs> yeah. Cause I couldn't afford the iPad Pro and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah. Right. And then eventually you transition because you see results. 
And that's one of the things that I think a lot of people get tripped on is like they go, well, if I don't have those things right away, right away I can't do what they do. Mm-hmm. No, that's an excuse. Yeah. That's a lie. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of people that do tell us that I probably only have one screen. That's fine. Yeah. Uh, what other things besides your setup? Like, you know, how disciplined are you in your schedule? Like, how do you plan out your schedule? You know, obviously you have a wife and beautiful kids too. So how do you, how do you prevent the them from knocking on the door and going, hey, Harold, <laughs> can you go take out the trash real quick? Like, yeah. what do you do in that sense? I love that question. It's my favorite. The reason why is because our family, like, you know, wife, kids, I mean, kids are, you know, three turning four and then have a five-year-old. Obviously, they don't really know, mm-hmm. you know, what. But they go, daddy's home. Yeah, they know, but they don't know. But my wife absolutely knows. My number one supporter, absolutely. Understands everything that I do, understands how I operate understands my mentality i mean i you know i still get you know in trouble you know <laughs> but <laughs> who doesn't but absolute supporter so you know and i have this conversation with a lot of agents especially if they have a spouse and they have kids you need to have that conversation with your spouse you need to go hey here's my goals here's what we what we want to accomplish as a family here's the things that we like to do and i want to be able to provide those things now in order to do so i got to go to work right so my wife and my kids know when daddy's at the desk, he's working. He, he's doing stuff. You know, I, have, I also have a headset, you know, and, and it's a wireless one because I like to pace when I talk. <laughs> so, but it's, it's on. They know I'm at the desk. I mean, sometimes will they come and want to jump on and see what I'm doing? Absolutely. But then it's like, hey, daddy has to go to work. And they know. Okay, well, let's go upstairs. Right? And my wife knows. Hey, daddy's working. Come on upstairs. Let's, you know, come come over here to play. Right. But I have that agreement with my wife. She knows, hey, we live a certain lifestyle. We get to do the things we want to do. We get to take the vacations that we actually want, like how we want to, right? And uh, for us, it's, you know, I work crazy hours, sure, and I really go do what I have to do. But for me, every single month for the family, we have an agreement, you know, with my wife that once a month we have a weekend getaway a weekend, whatever, right? If we want to fly somewhere, drive somewhere, there's no rules, whatever you want to do, you know, we'll do it. You know, she says, hey, let's go to Hawaii. Cool, let's do it. I'm not going to hesitate. I'm not going to argue with it, you know, because you, she's allowing me to put in all of this work, right? To do what I want to do, what I need to do to get to where, where we need to be as a family, right? So I don't, I don't, I don't put any rules on those things. Like even like, let's say it's like Halloween and you want me to put on a, a weird costume. Cool. I'm with it. Let me go to work. Let me do the things I need to do right. so that I can take that day off. So I can do those things. Right. Because that's the thing I think I see a lot of people do wrong in this business is they want to celebrate too mm-hmm. early. Mm-hmm. Right. And and one of the things that I've learned early in this business is like you earn mm-hmm. those two day vacations. You earn that reset. You mm-hmm. earn the ability to go, you know, charge your card or whatever it is without yeah. looking at the price tag. So many people, like, by the way, because at the clip you write, like we said earlier to start this call, that is not normal. And it's okay that it's not normal, yeah. right? Because, but the nice thing is it's possible because someone did it, mm-hmm. right? So if someone wanted to go get it and chase it, they can. The, the reason why I'm saying this is you have guys that write a fifth, maybe one-tenth of your volume. <laughs> yeah. I go, I work hard. I need to take a break now. Yeah. Dude. Respectfully, no. Yeah. You haven't. And and, and see, like, the word hard work is so relative, right? Because it's like, how do you define hard work? Like, what you say, you're lazy. I might go, dude, that guy's freaking nut. Like, I couldn't work at that level. Or what you, you know, because I've always said this when you interview people, everybody says the same thing. I'm hard work. (laughs) I'm disciplined. You know, I'm accountable. What does that mean? Because until you actually see them at work, you don't know what that really means. And they might think they're hardworking and you go, man, that dude is lazy as heck. Yeah. Right? And so I love that because my business changed when I set expectations with my wife too. Mm -hmm. And I said, hey, babe, this is what we're going to do. Our kids at the time, our daughter was one. And I said, I can either miss some stuff now for the next year or two that she probably wouldn't remember anyways because most people can't recall a memory prior to the age of four. If you don't believe me, try to. Tell me what you did for your second birthday. I don't know. I don't <laughs> think you know. So I said, I can miss a few of these things now, and it's going to suck. But when she's four, five, six, seven, 10, 15, I'll be at everything. Yeah. Or I'll be at all those things now, 
But when she has dance recital, golf, basketball, you know, volleyball, whatever it is, sorry, can't make it. Why? Because daddy has a job. Uh-huh. And so when I put that in her court and to let her choose, she chose whatever she wanted, which was sacrifice a little bit of time now so I could do those things later. And so when I needed to go on those runs, when I needed to have an extra call or two or three when it's family time, Mm -hmm. she wasn't busting my chops for it because she knew at the end of the day it was because of her family. Exactly. And when my daughter and my kids got older, my my son's two and a half now, it's like, hey, what do you guys want to do? We want to go to Disneyland, right? And I'm like, okay. Like, we know what that costs. Kids don't understand the concept (laughs) of money, right? Yeah. We know what that costs. And they're like, all right, we can go to Disneyland. Well, what do you want to do? We want to ride the rides and eat all the popcorn that we can and all the churros. <laughs> I'm like, all right, they can really only eat probably like four or five churros. <laughs> yeah. and that's going to be a couple hundred bucks. They don't understand what that costs. For us, it's like, dude, if we go rip 50, 60, whatever it is, we can go do that like 15 times. Yeah. But they don't get that. Mm-hmm. And it's okay. But it's like, for me, I'm like, all right, all right, baby girl. If you want to go to Disneyland, if you want to go eat all the you know churros that you can, daddy has to be away for the next few hours to be able to earn money to go do those things. Mm-hmm. And when she understood it, I lost the guilt. Yeah. Because I felt guilty in the beginning. Yeah. I don't know if you ever do. Absolutely. I felt guilty because like they would knock on the door and then they would want to sit on your lap and see what you're doing. Mm-hmm. And like, dude, it's hard to be able to tell your kid no. Yeah. But it's a short term pain because what happens is, you know, what's better is when I get to see their faces when we go do those things. And I'm assuming it's the same for you. When Absolutely. you actually get to go away for a day or two or whatever it is, and you can see how much joy they have because of all the hard work you built in that you can say yes, like that's that's why I did it. And then for them, that's the reason why they knew we had to do it. It was actually really cool. So recently, like the last few days, I was gone. I was out of town. And my son gets on my keyboard and just starts banging on things. He's two and a half. He doesn't know what's going yeah. on, right? And, and my, my wife goes, Bryson, what are you doing? He's like, working like daddy. <laughs> and for me, like, some people think it's crazy, but I'm like, dude, that's cool because at least he understands you got to work. Yeah. You know? And so that's cool, man. I love that you set the table with your family like that too and set the expectations because I don't think a lot of people do. That's the number one thing I get all the time. Yeah. They go, how do you and your wife work so well together here? I'm like, dude, we set expectations, clear boundaries on day one to know. And it's if the answer is no, because that's the other hardest part, is you don't have a supportive spouse in this business. This business gets really hard. Because right. the last thing you want is when you have a day of no shows, no sales, whatever it is, your wife's like, told you that thing didn't work. <laughs> yeah. Like that's the worst thing compared to someone that like you have those days and your your wife's like, hey, we're good. We'll bounce back. Yeah. Like I remember my wife was like, I'd be like, man, I got a 830 appointment that's an hour away. I want to come home. She's like, nope. <laughs> Stay in the field. Yeah. You always tell your agents, you got to go to the last one. Now you got to do it too. Don't be a hypocrite. And I'm yeah. like, damn. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. like that's cool when they're on your side and they know what the goals are as a family. They can support you and you don't feel that guilt because that's the thing that killed me the most. Yeah. And that conversation is important because I've had that conversation with with, with my wife. Say, hey, look, I, I'm going to work really hard. I can't have you yelling at me talking about all you do is work. All you do is this and all you do is that. That's not gonna, it's going to make it worse for me. I'm gonna, I am going to have that guilt. Right. I'm not going to feel good. And now I'm talking to clients and I don't feel good. Right. Right. So she, and, and the thing is, is that when you do have a spouse, you need to share wins. That's also a big thing. If you're not That's so sharing good. Nobody ever wins, talks about that. Yeah. If you don't share your wins with your spouse, like you're out of your mind. Dude, I write it. I write a deal. She, I mean, it's obviously over and over again. I write a deal. I tell her, yo, I wrote this one, this one. This, oh, you should have heard this client. Oh, you should have this. Oh, look what. Oh, I wrote this. I wrote that. Oh, their kids this. Their kids that. I talk about those things, right. and and I get that reinforcement for hey, you're doing a good job, good job, babe, good job. Babe. Hey, I I pre- she comes and tells me I appreciate you working really hard so that we can take that vacation. Right. And now it's like for me, I'm like, that's this is why I do what I do. Then when you get on that vacation, you're like, again with th- that smile on your kid's face, priceless time. I, we talked about you were talking about time. As a kid, yes, I'm, I'm kind of in agreement with you that whole like, yes, this first couple of years, I eh, don't remember stuff. For me, I'm like, yeah, if I can work like this and then later when they're in like middle school, high school, whatever, and I get to do every field trip. Yeah. Okay. I played soccer when I was a kid, you know, and um, my parents couldn't get to every single game and every single practice. And for me, I'm like, I want to change that trajectory. Yeah. Right. Because whether they're good or not good, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> right. But. Let's say it's soccer. They score a goal. 
guess what? You know the first thing they do is they look. In the bleachers. And they wave. Right. Even right now, my son does jujitsu. Uh, he doesn't really listen. <laughs> but <laughs> when he does something, he looks, waves. Right. Priceless. Put a price on that. You can't. Yeah. It just You just can't, right? And that's because I work so hard, I'm able to do those things, right? You know, and it's, I've even had somebody, someone's like, oh, you take these vacations, you go with the family and do all these things. Like, what if you worked? I'm like, I know what you're saying. It's like, I could work and you could have made X amount of dollars. And I'm like, you cannot put a price on family time. No. I don't care what dollar you tell me. No. Right? I already worked really hard to be able to get these priceless times and memories. That's what this is for. Dude, I, I said this. I, I heard this um, online because, you know, one of the things that I felt guilty about was um, being an absentee father. I'm mm -hmm. not one, but mm -hmm. I felt like it was, I was because mm -hmm. I was working so much. And uh, I had this mentor. He, he was, dude, this like changed my life. He goes, hey, weren't you coaching basketball? I was like, yeah. He goes, he goes, and don't you have a family too? And he's like, I'm like, yeah. He goes, well, Stephen Yee is not necessarily a father first or a husband first or a basketball coach first. He goes, you don't rank those things. It's just who you are. He goes, Stephen Yee, the businessman, is also Stephen Yee, the father and the husband. Mm -hmm. It's it's 1A, 1B, 1C. Mm -hmm. It's not 1, 2, 3. And when I learned, when he told me that, I was like, oh, my God. That's absolutely right. Yeah. Because my business life allows me to support my personal life and my personal life allows me to drive the sales and the exactly. organization for the business life. Yeah. It's not one A, one two, you know, one, one, two, three. It's one A, one B, one C. And I was like, dude, that's so good. And because like what you're saying is, you know, I've lost both of my parents. We weren't wealthy. I'm not saying I am now, but like I can assure you when I was in the hospital with my mom for 21 days straight, never did we talk about the money we had in the bank. It was always about the memories we had. You know what I mean? And, and it's like so many people go, oh, you could have worked there. Dude, I get it, but I've already worked harder than you. So I can't take a break, right? But, but the other thing is like money, I always feel like we can always make more of. Mm -hmm. Time, we can never get back. Yep. You know, so that's, I love that, man, because, you know, we rarely talk about that here sometimes. And, and it's so important because people look at us and go, you're workaholics. Do we enjoy it too, though? You yeah. just don't get to see it. We show you what we want you to see. Yeah. You know, so that's cool, man. Um, well, let's actually dive into some some training tips uh, for the guys that sell virtual sales. Mm -hmm. Obviously, for you to rip the type of premium that you rip, you know, what are some things that you have to do? Because you said something earlier that I don't think a lot of people caught. And you go, I got three screens. I got, you know, quoting software on one. I got, you know, probably your Slack or whatever on the other. And you got a script on the other. And then you got the client's lead form on the other, right? I watched like Dominique Rogers and Trey Honeycutt here recently at one of our lock-ins. And Dom said, dude, I used to be able to book face-to-face -face appointments without ever reading a script because it was straight conversational. Mm -hmm. He goes, telesales is a different beast. Mm -hmm. It is. It's a different beast. He, and then Trey Honeycutt validated. He goes, dude, I, was, I thought I was good so I can just free for all it. He goes, but what I realized was when I stuck to a script, especially in telesales, the sales came. You talked about having a script. Mm -hmm. For someone that sells the type of premium that you do, why do you have one? It's like a, it's a roadmap, right? So again, for most people, everybody naturally wants to start having random conversations with clients. You're talking to a client, you know, a lot of these clients are really interesting, have interesting jobs, interesting places they live. You naturally want to start talking about it and getting off topic. It doesn't help you, right? right? So for me, it's, it's my roadmap, it's my agenda, right? So I'm always looking at it and knowing What's next? What's next? What's next? What's next? And it's funny because everybody's like, you don't have it memorized? I'm like, no. And they're like, I make sure mentally I don't have it memorized. I Can I memorize it? Absolutely, sure. But I don't because if you memorize it, it gives you too much room for interpretation, right? And too much room for this way, that way. Now, if I just see my roadmap every single time, it's again, it's like, you know, we have GPS. You're not going to just be like, yeah, you know what? It says turn left. I'm just going to turn right. No, <laughs> you're going to follow it, right? right? So you're trying to get to a destination. So I do it the same exact way. I go boom, 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 boom. I'm not trying to. And again, it, uh, it makes it faster, right? It makes it easier because I'm not going. If I know I have, let's say, eight points that I need to hit. I'm not going one, six, uh, three, two, four, five, right. eight. And then you're like, 
wait, did I say that? Eight. Oh, well, let me go back to two, four, four, five. And I'm like, oh, I'm lost. Right. Right. But if I know I'm just going down all the way through, I'll, I don't get lost. It keeps me on, on, on task. It keeps me going and it prevents me from going different directions. So a lot of people try to go like, oh, I'm going to freestyle this. I'm like, it's not going to help you. Right. You're going to keep going back and forth. You're going to repeat yourself so many times, I promise you. Okay. And then the thing is, too, is like, even as a new agent, you know, I, I heard this the other day. It was like, somebody was like, well, I just kind of go with the flow. <laughs> like, I just make up my own thing, right? And this isn't like, no offense to anybody, right? No offense to anybody, uh, you know, any new agent or anything like that. But, you know, when I talk to new agents, they're like, oh, I just freestyle do this thing. And I'm like, how long have you been in the industry? Oh, one month, two months, oh, a week, six months. And I'm like, all right. I'd like, no offense, but what makes you think you have a right to create a presentation? Yeah. Like, you have no experience. So you just think, hey, this sounds good. I'm going to do this. This sounds great. I'm going to do that. Right. You don't need to do that. Everything's already been pre-written. There's a whole bunch of, you know, uh, people who've already done it. Just follow the proper presentation that they're telling you to do. Don't think, like, I'm going to go in and just make it up myself or I'll be good. It's like, it, it's funny when agents like, ah, you know, I did that presentation. It was the best presentation ever. And it's like, who listened to you? Just myself. I'm like, yeah, of course. It was the greatest presentation on the planet because I heard myself. I thought I did great. Sounds great in here. Didn't sound great coming out, though. <laughs> so, but it sounds great to you. And then, it, and I, I made this mistake in the beginning. I thought it sounded great. Isaiah was like, why'd you say that? Yeah, <laughs> I like, dude. I don't know. I have no idea. But you don't know that, right? Because, again, I made all those mistakes. And that's why we try to, again, as you know, when you have a team, you try to tell them, oh, hey, these are all the mistakes that I made. Don't do it. Right. But everybody wants to find out on their own. <laughs> right. They got to touch the so, yeah. See, the crazy part is, like, you have dummy-proofed the telesales process. Yeah. Because, no, because here's why I say that. Because not only have you written at a high clip. See, the ultimate, you know, the ultimate measure of a successful agent, in my opinion, is you might be able to go do it. Can you teach someone else to go do it? And when you have guys on your team that rip the type of premium that you write to, then it goes, okay, so respectfully, it's not because he's special, because he's done it too, he's done it too, she's done it too. Like, they're all doing it. Yeah. And so, like, that's the beauty of what you're able to do in the system that you have. Because we've always said system stands for save yourself time, energy, and money. Well, okay, cool. Why would I be a brand new agent to go create something that I don't know? And the other thing is they don't know what they don't know. They don't understand why your word tracks are the way they are. They don't know the closing questions are written the way they are. They don't yeah. understand the objections are removed because you ask it a certain way. Like, they don't get that because they're so new. Mm -hmm. And so, like, if they can remove the ego and if they can remove what they think they know, then, therefore, they can have the success that you have. You said something earlier that was really good. I learned that effective communication is not what you say, it's what they hear. Because mm -hmm. what you want to say versus what is received is two different things. Exactly. And when they hear themselves talk, they go, oh, this is what the client hears. Dude, I had a guy, funny story, true story. He, he, he was a phenomenal sales guy at whatever industry he came from, right? He tries to, he's one of those guys that are like, I'm going to kill this because I have so much sales experience. <laughs> and he comes in here and he, he did a sales presentation. I think he went like 0 for 9, Yeah. right? <laughs> And he goes, dude, I don't get it why people are not buying from me. I was like, hey, this is really weird, but the next time you do a sales presentation, record it on your phone, like on voice recorder, and send me the audio. And I think in the first like nine minutes of, the, of like his interaction with the client, he's offended them like 20 times. Jesus. Without even knowing that he did. Yeah. That was the crazy part. Like, for example, he's asking medical uh, conditions, and he goes, hey, you know, Mary, have you ever had a heart attack, stroke? No. Okay, what about cancer? She goes, yes. And he goes, awesome. <laughs> because he Jeez. thought it was the normal Because he was like, yeah, this is what I normally say. It's just robotic for me to say mm. it. And I'm like, dude, there's nothing awesome about having cancer. Yeah. And it's then nuts. I was like, you said this. He goes, no, I didn't. And I'm like, three minutes, 24 seconds. And he goes, oh, my gosh, I said that. I'm like, yeah, dude, you don't even know you're doing it. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's why, like you said, a sales script is so vital because you can literally go, hey, back, 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 right? The thing about, you said GPS. When I turn right, when I'm supposed to go left, you know what GPA does? It goes, relocate, relocate. And it basically changes everything and then bring me right back on track. And that's mm -hmm. what your script does. And I love that. Is there anything that you can give tips-wise, right? Because a lot of people do telesales. Whoop-de-doo. 
and they write, you know, a fraction of what you write. Are there any tips that you can give that people probably would overlook or they don't even think they're missing it that you can probably help them out with in their business? For telesales? Yeah. Specific? Yeah, absolutely. Like going into telesales. Okay, so just telesales in general. How like this question comes up. Like, I want to start doing telesales. What do I do? I'm like, great question. I love that. And I'm like, burn that, burn that bridge of driving. And they're like, what do you mean? Go buy leads in another state. You ain't driving there. I there promise you. Go. you. You're never going to drive there, okay? So now you have no choice but to do it because you're like, all right, I'm not driving there, so I'll, let's just run it. Let's do it. Second thing is um, basically putting yourself in the cor correct position at home, right? <clears throat> Again, having a work station because you need to feel like you are at work. If you are, again, you said earlier, Oh, I'm on the couch, roll out of bed, I'm on the couch, I'm in the <laughs> bed. You're not in the right mentality. You're still in the like, let me lay down and chill mentality, right? For me, I'm I'm going straight to my desk, sitting at that desk, turning everything's on, everything's ready to go. I have all the all my tools on my pens here, I have pencil here, or this, whatever, everything that I need right in front of me, water, whatever it is that I need. All that stuff is right there in front of me because I'm ready to go. Like as if you went to a regular office or a regular job, you have right. to have all your stuff. Okay, so, you know, I, I make sure that your mentality is right. Then the second thing is, again, presentation. I, my best advice is making sure your first presentation is not your first presentation. Mm, Everybody's that's like, so good. what does that mean? And I'm like, well, recollection. And they're like, okay, if your first presentation is the first time you are going through the presentation, you're not going to have recollection. So first thing you do is when you start your day, I do it, same ritual. I literally re go through my presentation. I'll do it out loud sometimes. Sometimes I won't, but I'll run through the presentation all the way through and through so that when I am sitting with somebody and I'm like, I remember thing. I'm It's recollection because I just did it. It wasn't the first time. Because usually when you your first presentation, it's always rusty, sounds funny. Mm -hmm. you, you pause a lot and you're like, where am I at? Oh, uh. mm -hmm. But when you make it your second presentation, okay, now it's, you're just remembering everything you were just saying before, and you remember to stay on track. Okay. Um, again, telesales is all about making sure the home is right, your home at home, because your business isn't going to be right. You're not going to do well if your home isn't correct, your family isn't correct. Okay. Because if you don't have yourself in that strict schedule of I'm working, you think like, oh, I'm going to get up and go again, do the dishes. I'm going to go, you know, oh, lunch, let's go do it. Let's take a two-hour lunch. It's all good. I'm, I'm my own boss. I could do that. Right. You know, and, it, and people tend to do that. It's a big mistake. I get it. We do have that, right? But it's earned. Exactly what you said. It's earned. That's an earned right that you give to yourself. You don't do it just because you, you can, right? right? You got to earn your way to be able to take some time off and, you know, be able to do those lunches. Sure. Right? So, you know, again, get rid of those, uh, get, get rid of that bridge of driving, go buy leads outside of the, out of the state, go work them. Okay. Make sure your home is right. Make sure your, your business, your office, it's all correct. Okay. Because you have to be in the right mind state. Again, that, even that positivity, that mindset, how you start your day is super important. Um, my wife hates it. I put on YouTube or some type of audio book or something, something positive. I like to start my day on a positive note. Okay. Every day you start off, you know, like an even keel. You're not net, you're not positive, you're not negative or anything like that. But I want to start my day as high as possible, right? On a on a positive note. So if something does hit me that is negative, it only takes me like, you know, I'm at an eight, it'll take me down one notch. I'm still positive. If I was at an even keel, right? Something negative happens, now I'm already in the negative zone. Mm -hmm. I don't want that to happen. So I keep, keep my days, I start my days off right, okay? And again, re I remove all distractions, you know, remove any distraction. There's no, t I don't have no TV next to me. I don't got nothing, you know, I, I, I can close myself into my office and do my work, go to work, right? Do those things, right? Keep, and then again, that other thing we were talking about, presentation. Do not reinvent the wheel. Mm -hmm. Do not reinvent it. There's no point, okay? So... Follow what's already the path that's been beaten, okay? And I think one more thing, actually, most important thing. You need to make sure somebody is listening to you. 
every presentation, okay? Because they will catch something that you say, like you just said earlier, that you didn't know you were saying. Just one little thing. Like even asking, like, what do you think? <laughs> and they're like, yeah, you're right. I don't know. I should probably think about this. Like, Why'd you say that? Why'd you say that? Or even when you're going over options. So this is going to cost you yeah. on a monthly basis, and you're like making it sound terrible, you know? <laughs> it's like, don't, you know, again, you never catch those things. You know, as you're always going to think, I did the best presentation ever. And then exactly what you're saying. You offended somebody so many times, you know, you, you said, know you, did oh, you didn't know, right? Somebody else will catch it. And that's what you got to do because that's how you get, that's how you get better. You can never, ever get better in this business by yourself. It's just not possible. Yeah. It's impossible. You, you can't. You can't learn more from yourself. How how do you do that? Right. <laughs> you know? That's good, man. Cause so many people have that ego and thinking, hey, I know it all. Mm -hmm. And it's and it's sometimes it's like, dude, you always wonder why like professional athletes and like, you know, high level sports teams, they always go back to the basics. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes it's just a gentle reminder that you need to go, oh man, this is why I need to do it that way. Right. Like John Wooden, you know, won 10, 11 national championships at UCLA or whatever it is. The first day of practice of every every year, hey, this is how you tie your shoes. This is how you put on your jersey, how you put on your shorts. And everybody's like, why does he do that? Because at the end of the day, it's back to the basics. Yeah.